This is the solution to problem 3 from uh, Wednesday, March 11th recitation. Uh, this is the recitation on conservation of momentum. So you have some things on a table. We are throwing stuff at them. So let's draw some little cartoons of what's going on. So in both cases, we have a table that has some friction. And we have a box sitting on that table. We've got some little object that we throw at it. Um, that object is flying in uh, at some speed v0, which is 4 meters per second in both cases. Now, one of two things could happen. Either the object bounces back, or it sticks to the box. <coughs> so drawing these again, let's see, here's our table. It's got some friction. There's a box. Either it sticks Oops, come on. Either it sticks and the whole thing moves that way at some velocity, or it bounces back. Here it's recoiling this way at 2 meters per second. The box is going that way at some final velocity. So the question is, which one has a greater final velocity? And the hint here asks you to think about impulse, and that's going to be the key. So in the top case, the change in velocity of the ball is smaller. So here, is smaller because it sticks. Here, delta v for the ball is larger because the block doesn't just stop it from moving forward, it stops it and sends it back. So this one, the bottom case where the ball bounces back, involves, involves a larger change in momentum of the ball and thus a larger change in momentum of the box as well. Because remember, collisions don't uh, change the total momentum, they just transfer it from one thing to the other. So here, this one knocks the, bo uh, knocks the box further. We can do this calculation and see. So here we're going to have to do two calculations, uh, one of them for the one where it sticks and one of them for the one where it bounces off. So for number one, I've got Let's see. Uh, I know that the total momentum is constant. So we need actually some variables now. We need to represent the masses of these things um, with some symbols. So I'll decide that the box is big M. The objects thrown at it are little m. This is V naught and we'll call this v bounce. And of course, this is mu. So 
How far does each object knock the box? Well, for the one that sticks, which will be the easiest one to do, the initial momentum only comes from the, um, the ball, and that's equal to the combined total momentum. They're both moving together uh, VF. But for number two, again, only the ball has momentum in the beginning, but this time they don't move together after the collision. The box is moving forward, but the ball is moving backwards. So now in both cases, we just solve for uh, the final velocity of the box. So here, um, Vf is going to be mv0 over big M plus little m. Here, doing the algebra, Vf is going to be little m v0 plus little m v bounce over little m plus big M. Whoops, no, over just big M. So now, in order to figure out how far they knock the box, we will, down here, think about the box sliding to rest. So as something slides to rest, the force doing it is friction. We're going to use the kinematics relation that doesn't have time in it, because we don't know about time, don't care about time. This is the one related to the work energy theorem, which you now know. The acceleration here is um, due only to friction. So the acceleration is going to be the force of friction divided by the total mass. Here m is just the mass of whatever the thing is sliding to rest. Since the, the force of friction is just mu times the normal force, mu fn over mass, which is mu mg over m, which is just mu g. So combining these two things, I get terrible error that Vf squared minus V naught squared is here the acceleration. Really, we should put a minus sign in here because the, the acceleration is the opposite direction of the initial velocity. Uh, so that's going to be min uh, minus 2 mu g delta x. So solving this, um, oh, one more thing I can do. The final velocity is zero because this thing is coming to rest. So this means just solving this for delta x, that delta x is v naught squared over two mu g. I realize I'm off my window a little bit. I can't fix it quickly. This is, again, I am learning this as I go. So taking that result, what I'm going to do is, at this point, I will put in numbers to solve for the um, velocities. Now here, keep in mind that this is very important, that v final here, this is after the motion, i.e. zero, and this initial velocity is the same as that final velocity, right? There, there are two things that happen. There's a collision, and this final velocity is
the one after the collision. That's why it's marked final. But here, this final velocity is after the motion. So what I've labeled as V final up top uh, right here, that's the final velocity after the collision has happened but before they have skidded to rest. So the point is that this VF is the same as that V naught. So just to make things easier to write, let's put in the numbers here. So I'll go to my handy little Python interpreter. I have 500 grams or 0.5 kilogram times the initial velocity of 4 meters per second divided by their combined mass, which was uh, 5 plus a half. That gives me 0.36 meters per second on top. And this bottom one, I've got the mass of this times V naught plus that times V bounce. So that whole thing in parentheses divided by the mass of the big object gives me 0.6 meters per second. So this is what we expected. The second case where the ball bounces off uh, makes it go faster after the bounce. So then if we're trying to figure out how far they knock the box, So I can just plug these into this formula. So delta x here, going back to our handy little Python interpreter. 0.36 meters per second squared. Oops, that's squared in Python. Divided by 2, what's the coefficient of friction? 0.5. 2 times the coefficient of friction times g, which we'll use 10. Um, this gives me uh, 0.13, excuse me, 0.013 meters, so 1.3 centimeters. And the second case is the same math, but now we use 0.6 as the initial velocity. Now we get 3.6 centimeters. So, yes indeed, the one where it bounced off knocks the box further. So what did we learn from this problem? Um, so collision means use conservation of momentum. So we use conservation of momentum here. We found the final velocities. Um, and then, once we found the final velocities, we could use kinematics, or later we'll use the work energy theorem, to figure out what happens after that. Um, the notation confusion here is that this final velocity that I have marked here, my choice of notation there is a little bit unfortunate because final here just means after the collision, but that's the same as the initial velocity before the motion. So thank you all. Um, any other problems will be in another video.